tithing. <laughs> it seems one of the least popular subject among Christians, very sadly, and I think that there is one, another subject that is uh, even less popular and it's called fasting. Very rarely Christians would discuss the need for fasting and the value of fasting, but the fasting is now, it's another topic. I would love to, I would love, I would love to share with you the biblical teachings, dear friends, the biblical teachings of tithing and to share with you the blessing of tithing. Now, of course, in our world, we have these treasury bills, certificates of deposit, mortgages, stocks and bonds, real estate. The complicated vocabulary of our modern money system seems hard to master. And new money making schemes are constantly being dreamed up. It seems almost every conceivable way of making one's money stretch and grow has been tried. Everyone but one, that is, the very one that the Bible, God's instruction book for men, proclaims as the true investment vehicle for financial peace of mind. That virtually untried system is tithing. The very suggestion that modern man should tithe strikes most as laughable. But isn't it strange that the bonds of a human government millions of dollars in debt make sense as an investment, while the tithing system of God who created and owns everything in the universe is treated with scorn? Should tithing be treated scornfully? Is it passé? Or is it a command and a financial law that we must observe today? Well, you need to know, for Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, 9, and 10, pronounces a blessing on those who tithe and, conversely, a curse on those who want. If tithing is for today, that blessing or curse is for you and for me. Now, what is the basic biblical doctrine? Well, to tithe means to allocate one-tenth of one's income to Christ for his church. Tithing has always been God's financial system and continues to be a binding obligation upon New Testament Christians to whom blessings are promised for tithing and curses for refusing to do so. Now, the usual teachings of this world, as you can well imagine, of course, are diametrically opposite of what the Word of God teaches us. Of course, the law of tithing finds precious little support even in religious circles today to say nothing of financial advisors who would openly laugh at the idea. Many though not all, religious leaders proclaim that we need not tithe, giving as we are able, saying that the New Testament just requires giving as we are able. Well, some say tithing was just for the Jews, or that the law of tithing was done away with the passing of the Old Covenant and the law of Moses. Others maintain tithing was only a civil matter, even in Old Testament times, and the existence of civil tax codes negates the need to tithe today. Others say the tithe was only to help the poor and that our modern welfare system takes its place. Still others say that they believe in tithing, but conclude that the word simply means giving money to the church in whatever amount one chooses. Many of these beliefs may be well-intended and well-intentioned and well-intended, but all of them are proven wrong by plain biblical evidence. What is the word of God, what does the Bible say about tithing? Well, the Bible teaching is this. The mind of man is selfish and thus swayed by covetousness not to believe that one should give anybody, even God, a tenth of one's income. Most often, this selfishness is framed by the argument that says, I've worked hard for my paycheck and the money is mine. Why should anybody be able to tell me what to do with it? But this argument is fallacious. We make money with talents God gives us, with a life he gives us, with elements from the earth he created and owns. God says plainly in Job chapter 41 verse 11, everything under heaven is mine. And in Psalm 50 verse 12, the world is mine and all its fullness. We are guests blessed with the privilege of living here and using God's beautiful earth. So our money is not really ours. And why should it seem wrong for God to command that we tithe our income to Him? Even the governments of this world make prior demands on our income in the form of taxes, and we quickly agree with their right to do so, if not their means or amounts. The place to begin for this topic is to define the word tithe. I've already done it already, but it means an exact tenth of something. As used in the Bible, it refers to allocating one-tenth of one's income to the work of God's church. It does not mean simply giving it in a general way, giving money in a general way. 
So the crux of the tithing doctrine is simply this. The only financial system for the support of the church commanded, illustrated or even referred to in the entire Bible in both Old and New Testament is tithing. No other overall financial system is recognized. The church is not authorized to charge for its services, nor is it put into the position of having to beg for money. Abraham, Genesis 14, verse 11, uh, sorry, Genesis 14, verses 18 through 20, Abraham tied it to the priest Melchizedek long before the children of Israel were e- even, were ever given the tithing oil, long before they even existed. Leviticus 27, verse 30, tithing was commanded of the Israelites in later centuries as God's chosen method of finance, financing the priesthood. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, 9, and 10, the prophet and the prophet Malachi, as well as the prophets in the Bible, they denounced those who would not tithe. Tithing was the recognized system during Christ's time. Please look at his words in Matthew 23, 23. And the Apostle Paul proclaimed that God's ministry should receive the tithes of the people in the New Testament era of the church in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 4 through 14. Those who oppose tithing cannot turn to scripture to support any supposed substitute. So what men have instead tried to do is frame counter-arguments against tithing in an attempt to say it was done away. One such argument against tithing states that we need not tithe today since we are bound to the spirit of the law and not the letter. Well, for proof, some will even turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, which seems to imply a person can give whatever he wants. But to obey the spirit of the law means to go above and beyond the letter, not to annul it. Therefore, tithing is not annulled by the spirit of giving, but merely consigned to be the least a person must do. Another supposed reason why we need to not tithe, critics say, is that tithing was only for the Jews. (laughs) Well, of course, those who use this argument don't even address, one, that the law of God gave Israel, uh, that the law of God, God uh, that the law God gave Israel was not just to the Jews. And second, that God said the law He gave Israel was full of wisdom and understanding, Deuteronomy chapter four, verse five and six. And three, that we all must become spiritual Jews to receive salvation, Romans two twenty nine and John chapter four, verse twenty two. But even in addition to these truths. It is plain that tithing was not merely for the Jews, since Abraham tithed it to God long, long before God gave Israel his tithing law. Abraham was, of course, not a Jew, but was the father of the faithful, one who feared God and kept his commandments, Genesis 26, verse 5, as should we. Tithing is not necessary, say some detractors, because it was part of the Old Covenant, and the Old Covenant is done away. Well, look, true, tithing was indeed part of the Old Covenant. But Abraham tied it and he lived long, long before the terms of the Old Covenant were instituted. What well, the Old Covenant did not originate, did not die with it. Tithing did not originate with the Old Covenant. Rather, tithing was part of the Old Covenant because tithing is the system God has always used to finance his work. Some who are uninformed will say tithing was purely a matter of civil taxation or was only to help support the poor. Well, they say that our government tax system and welfare programs take the place of the tithe. Really, how can the governments of this world take the place of God anyway? But anyway, the Bible, however, is clear on the matter. The first tithe was specifically for the support of the religious system and priesthood. Numbers chapter 18, verse 20 and 21. Finally, some will say that they do not tithe since it is not commanded in the New Testament. Again, this is a fallacious argument for and for numerous reasons. First, those who say such a thing are requiring, in effect, a direct, thus says the Lord, before they will obey God on any, on any point. The Bible shows God will on many doctrines uh, without using the exact expression. So the Bible shows God's will on many doctrines without using the exact expression. Those who will not obey God unless he uses some magic words of which they approve plainly do not want to obey God and will always try to find a way to justify not obeying him, no matter what he says. It is as simple as that. Second, the New Testament does indeed clearly confirm the tithing law for us today. 
For example, in Matthew 23, 23, Christ upbraided the Pharisees for ignoring justice and mercy and faith, but he added that tithing, which they did do, albeit in the wrong manner, should not remain undone. Hence, he confirmed the tithing law. Further, Paul spoke of tithing in Hebrews 7. Paul showed that the priesthood of Jesus Christ supersedes the Levitical priesthood of the Old Testament. And yes, they are still preachers of Jesus Christ. One of those you're listening to right now. So we must tie today. Hebrews 7.5 clearly labels tithing as a law. In summary then, the law of tithing remains what it has always been. The only system of finance for God's church that has ever been used, espoused or even referred to in the Bible. The key verses for the doctrine of tithing is, are there in the Bible for us? You see, tithing is such an important topic, it's a matter of blessing and curse. It's such an important topic that we should briefly list and briefly uh, uh, be reminded of, and if possible, remember the main scriptures one may turn to in explaining it. Genesis 14, 18 to 20, Abraham tithed long before Israel was commanded to do so. Leviticus 27, 30 and Numbers 18, 20, 21, Israel was commanded to tithe in support of God's religious system. Job 41 verse 11 and Psalm 50 verse 12, God owns everything, even things we think are ours. Matthew 23, 23 and Hebrews 7, 4 through 14, even after Christ's death, Paul called tithing, which was confirmed by Christ, a law. And finally, Malachi chapter 3 verse 8, 9 and 10, blessings for tithing and curses for not tithing. In conclusion, dear friends, yes, Man in general has looked to every conceivable metal of finance and money, man, money management, but has ignored the very system God ordained to finance his church and bless his people personally. But God's church today stands as a bright beacon, proving for all to see that God's tithing system works. And indeed it does. So, if you desire to have the blessings of God, please don't forget tithing.